The first video covered the basic functions of the keyboard, how the connections work and the, using the onboard LFO uh, mod wheel and obviously pitch, pitch bend and so on. And also setting up a basic patch with the modules. Whereas the second video looks at each of the modules individually in greater detail so you can understand what it is to show what they do and how they work. This final video is just going to highlight a few of the extra functions that the controller is capable of that relate to the usage here which is with a, a monophonic 3VCO synthesizer. Because there's no stereo output and no polyphony then this will just cover the functions that are useful for that purpose. But if you want to see what extra features that it can do in using it with other synthesizers or other module setups, then go over to Create Audio's website or their YouTube channel and, and check out their user guide videos. And when you receive your instrument, you'll get one of these. And this is repeated on Create Audio's website as well, but it's really handy to have around and it's a nice scale display of all the the functions when using the function key in conjunction with the keyboard, most of which are shown on the screen printing, but there's so many functions that to put all of them in the screen printing would probably be a little bit messy. So quite wisely some of the, the less obvious ones are, are hidden. But basically they all relate to pressing the function key once and then activating or deactivating one of these functions and then function will either turn itself back off or it will wait for you to to disengage it. And there also are a few exceptions where you'll have to press function and then shift in conjunction with one of the other keys for things like doing a factory reset if ever you need to. But most importantly here, things that aren't highlighted on the, the screen printing are LFO modes and also gate retriggering. But this will also come in handy if you wanted to do things like using the keyboard split to control this synthesizer and another one separately using two different zones of the keyboard, in which case you can use this to divide them into regions to control each of the instruments. Starting with the arpeggiator and the symbols showing each of the arpeggiator modes are marked by the keyboard here. And in order to activate it, first I have to switch on ARP. And then this button, latch, will determine whether or not the arpeggiator will play as long as we've got the keys held down, or if it will just, if we put latch on, then it will just keep running even when we remove our hands from the, from the keys. So to get the arpeggiator running, first press the function key and then select the arpeggiator mode that you want, starting with up. And just by pressing the key, because I've got the latch control on, it will just continue to play that note until I change to another note. And if I combine notes, it'll play between them. If there's multiple notes, it'll play all the notes in a, an upward order. and I can change the order of play by selecting function again and then change it to down. And you notice the light, when I change the mode, it'll come on, stay on. Once I press the key, it'll flash twice and then it'll go back to flashing where it was before. It's just to indicate that it's, that it's finished waiting for a command, it's registered that it's changed modes and now it's gone back to normal operation. So if I do that again for up and down. And then there's a random mode. And as before, if you press another key, it will just reset itself to whatever key you've pressed or whatever combination of keys. There's rate control, which is also a control that normally doubles for the LFO. The 
the range control will play the current arpeggio at multiple octaves. So at the moment it's just set to one. But I can get it to cycle through two, and then three, and four. The sequencer mode functions differently. Let's press the function key down, and it's waiting for a command. Then when you press sequencer, if you had the arpeggio running previously, it'll stop. And the light stays on, and that's to tell you that it's waiting for keys to be pressed. And as soon as you enter notes, it'll start to play them. And it'll just add them to the list of notes. Any notes that are pressed twice will be repeated. And once you've got all the notes that you want in the sequence, then press the function button again. Now the keyboard will transpose sequences. and range still works with the sequencer mode as well. The different voicing modes predominantly relate to the polyphonic function of the, of the controller, but they do have a use when used as a, with a monophonic synthesizer like this, and that's the auto chord function. In order to get this to work, I need to utilize CV1, 2, and 3 in the case of this setup because I've got three VCOs. So CV1 going to the first VCO, CV2 going to the one volt per octave with the second VCO, and same with CV3 all the VCOs tuned to the same pitch and it sounds like this. I'll just separate them just so you can hear. Now I need to press the function button. First of all switch into four voice mode and that just allows it to send different pitches through each of the, the CV outputs. Because we've only got three VCOs, we only have to go as far as programming in three notes. But then function again and then turn auto chord on. And then finally function again and then press learn. Now it'll be waiting for you to input keys. So I'll press my three notes that I wanted. It will actually remember a fourth note if you had a four VCO set up and it'll actually remember up to 16 for controlling it via MIDI to use a, a controller polyphonic synthesizer, for example. But we only need three here, so release my three notes and turn the function off. And I've got a single finger chord. The first video covered how to activate the built-in LFO using the function key and selecting the LFO here at the moment. So if I set this back to mod wheel and I've got the mod LFO output going to filter frequency, if I just play a note I can use the mod to control the filter frequency and click it again, switch it into LFO. And that starts to add built in LFO, and this is its tempo control. But there are a couple of different waveforms, and they involve pressing the function button. So they start at this position, and that's just a triangle wave. Once it's stopped flashing, it'll be ready to go. 
the next key is the uh, ramp. And the next position is a sawtooth. Next is a square wave. And finally, the last position here is for random. And this again controls the level modulation. Right. Another really useful hidden feature on this keyboard is the ability to change the way the keys will re-trigger the envelopes when you move directly from one key to the next. On some mono synths, when you move from one key directly to another, still holding the original key, the next note will re-trigger the envelope generator and then whatever the envelope's controlling, in this case the filter frequency in the VCA. But many of the vintage synthesizers, when you press the second key, it wouldn't re-trigger the envelope. And we can switch between these two behaviours by pressing function and then this key. Now I want to do the same thing. Going directly to another note, holding the original note, won't re-trigger the envelope. So if I release the key, I'll re-trigger the envelope every time. But if I keep the key held down, this is particularly good because many controllers will only give you one or the other and not an option of choosing for yourself. So this means it's more capable of mimicking the behaviour of, of vintage synthesizers, and so you can play them exactly how you want to. Lastly, the controller has a couple of different options for audio output. At the moment, I'm just taking the audio directly from the VCA to an audio interface, and in most cases that's probably all you need to do. Some of these options are really for stereo modules so if you had a stereo voice set up in the in the keyboard then you'd be able to output the the sound in stereo or even if you had multiple voices within that that space you could send them to their own individual outputs on the back you've got 6.3 millimeter jacks that correspond to outputs one and two and you've also got headphone output with this and both of their own level controls. But the headphone option might be useful for using with this system, just so you can hear the sound directly coming from the synthesizer conveniently without having to connect it up to anything else. In order to get the sound to either the main or the headphone outputs, we need to connect to out one and out two. For the main output, the audio is two separate mono outputs, which are accessed by their respective inputs here. But with the headphones, in order to cater for the possibility of, of stereo modules being installed, then out one goes to the left side of the headphone output or the headphone mix, and out two goes to the right. In which case, if you're using this mono synth, which is obviously mono, it's not stereo, you need to use a multiple. So if I pinch this multiple, which I'm just using as a, an easy way to reach my envelope generator and then I'll disconnect the audio and I would take the output 
to one of these multiples because both of these are going to either side of the stereo mix in the headphones. So I need to duplicate this signal to both out one and out two. So take the first output from this module, from this multiple and go to out one. And then the second to out two. And now if I connect headphones to the headphone output, I'll be able to hear the sound correctly in the headphones in both ears.